Hi there everybody and welcome to my spaceship and late game guide for RimWorld. I'm Icon and in this video I'm going to show you what's necessary to build a spaceship and get off this planet. This is going to explain the vanilla way of ending the game and I'm going to also explain what's going to happen during that process and how to prepare carefully for that. So let's get started. Before you can actually think about building a spaceship, you will need to research the necessary technologies. That's Starflight Basics and all the subsequent technologies behind that, unlocking the necessary parts to build that ship. Once you have that done, you will need one more thing, which is only acquirable via a quest. We're going to cheat that thing right now, and that's a Persona Core. The Persona Core can be acquired by being friendly with one ally, having a comms console, and having researched the necessary spaceship technologies. Then they will give you a call and offer you the location of one of these wonderful shiny things for a hefty sum of silver, which you can then plunder like any uh, adventure stash goody side. When that's out of the way, you only need a couple of other things before you can start the fun. And that's materials. You will need tons of steel, plasteel, components, advanced components, gold and uranium. I'm talking about roughly 300 units of uranium, a little bit more, a little bit less. I didn't calculate it too much. Um, something around 1,000 steel and then, well, components to no end. I can't really summarize it too good because it all depends on how many crypto sleep caskets you want to build. But overall, you will sink in a lot of materials. These can be safely acquired via trade or other methods are long range mineral scanning for the materials or getting that on your own map via deep drilling. The choice is up to you. I'd strongly recommend you to try to not allocate all the re resources at once. Just build that ship along the way. That's why I don't actually know how many resources you truly need, because when I did the spaceship, I always built it over time. Okay, before you want to start to build that spaceship, look for a location and fortify it a bit. This is really cool and important because those raiders they want to attack that spaceship and they want to attack that uh, those structures like they want to attack all of your structures. Only that with your spaceship, the losses are much, much more costly. So ideally double wall that if you are paranoid or not, if you're not, and then add in defense measures to your own liking. IEDs, sentry turrets, whatever uh, scratches your itch. Only make sure that this area also withstands possible attacks of sappers and such things that just breach your walls. Okay, after that's been done, we're gonna go into the ship tab. Here we have all the necessary parts for building the ship. We'll just start with one structural beam and then everything will be quite easy after that. Just make sure that the area where you want to build that ship supports heavy buildings because that terrain here won't work for the spaceship. So, once you have the first part set down, you can check the launch report. This wonderful screen will tell you everything you need to know what's necessary to build the spaceship. It will tell you what components are necessary and basically it's quite simple. One part of each, except for the ship engines, or you need three of each. Also, one crypto sleep casket per person which wants to escape. Now, how you build this thing is entirely up to you. There's only one real, real rule with all this. The crypto sleep caskets need to be attached to the structural beams like that. This is the only thing. Beyond that, you can combine these things just like you want to. The ship computer core can go to the uh, to the, to the generator, but also to, to something like the structural beams. It really doesn't care. Structural beams can be connected to this. It's entirely up to you. And in the end, this monstrosity doesn't even need to look remotely like a spaceship. It doesn't even matter at all. If you want to have that real spaceship vibe, go for the Save Our Ship mod. Real good stuff. Real spaceships, lots of more effort though. Now. You will then have to, wait a sec, put up these things all together. And once this monstrosity is ready, 
you have one crypt to sleep casket per person that you want to take with you, your spaceship is ready. And, and that's what a spaceship looks like in this game. Sorry guys. If you expected more, then you have to tinker around and make it more beautiful. I didn't in this scenario because it didn't matter too much. Neat things to know on the side. The ship reactor produces power on its own. This is a passive generator of 1000 watt of energy. And if you don't have all the resources together at, from the get-go, start with the ship reactor so you can just pipe in some free power into your grid. You just need to connect that with your power grid and just like that you have a little bit of an extra uh, extra resource there easy after that nothing will happen for for now you will only start a chain of events once you press that start ship button but before you do be prepared so in this scenario for example we haven't finished those uh, fortifications yet, so let's quickly do that. In this scenario, we're putting up some some basic uh, kill boxy thing. I did bring up a couple of uh, co trap corridors and such. Nothing too special, but that's uh, really really neat to have. Fortify yourself to your own liking. I don't know what kind of um, fortress builder you are, but the thing is clear. After you have started activating, after you activate the generator, you will provoke attacks for the next 15 days, non-stop. You will be attacked between one to three times per day from various things. Raiders and mechanoids mostly. If the biome in your environment is not supporting enemies out of flesh and blood, you will only be attacked by mechanoids exclusively especially in colder biomes. If there's something like an eternal winter in your vicinity, don't expect to see any raiders. That means your people need to be battle ready. Be stocked up with food, drugs, weapons, backup materials, because once you start this process, there's no turning back in that regards. You will be under permanent pressure. My personal recommendations would be that you make sure that you have a nice stockpile of steel and components to replace uh, as many turrets as necessary because turrets are your best friends in these scenarios because you see turrets are just free explosive buddies I'll show you what I mean as soon as we have that wired up the Gun turrets have one particular purpose in all my colonies, and that's not necessarily shooting stuff down, that's honestly mostly exploding for me in my favor. And that's why these extra stockpiles of resources go in so handy, because the AI enemies will always attack the first foremost thing, and therefore when you have enough resources you can put up something like that. and. Keep, make sure that you have three squares in every direction free and every exploding turret will take down a couple of foes for you. Beyond that, you have to expect attacks from all manner of different angles. When you activate that, the attacks will come from the map's edges, from drop pods, from diverse angles. You basically have to have a base which is prepared against every sort of assault. That's why food, resources and medicines are so important, because you will be fighting constantly. Another thing is quite important. The scale of these attacks, the massiveness, is strongly determined by the amount of your people. So if you run into this scenario with 12 people and you lose like six or seven people in the, in the process of the first few days, every subsequent attack will be smaller and easier to manage. So don't give up just like that if you feel like you're being overtoppled at the beginning. It's just some calling of your defense structures. The game will just punch you down to a level where you can successfully hold it or perish. So let's start that ship and let's show you what I'm talking about. So once you do that, the process will take about 15 days and then you go. Another thing which is quite useful to do, which I personally love to, was to be friends with all my neighbors here. Because when you're allied with people, you can call in extra reinforcements, which then 
will protect you from these enemies. So these uh, instant soldiers are a wonderful way of keeping your colony safe in these uh, in these troubled times. And after that, well, you have to fight back what's coming up against you. And once that's done, you can put your people into the crypto sleep caskets and fly away and enjoy a wonderful credit scene, which I won't spoiler here at this point. And that's literally all that's to it. So right now we would be just waiting until a catastrophe breaks down. And that's that. So I hope guys that was quite helpful for you. So maybe you were a little bit shy of trying out these, uh, this, this thing or you wanted to know what it's all about. It is very easy, it's very simple, understandable, and also there's nothing to be too afraid of. If you're not playing in commitment mode, just try it out for yourself. But I gotta admit, I didn't get, I, uh, I haven't uh, lost the game a single uh, time so far in the process of building the spaceship with the methods I have explained here. So, Raid Fintathor, as you see here, now it begins. And since my colony is pretty small, the raid is also rather small. And if you ever find that it's too much for you, go there into the storyteller settings and tone down the difficulty. Because, you know, this is by far the most difficult uh, combat situation that you, can be, uh, that you can have. And the constant pressure will be quite exciting. But it's a very, very thoroughly enjoyable ride. Alrighty, friends, that's all I, can, I can say about that topic. Feel free to ask further questions and drop them into the comment section. I will do my best to answer them. Of course, if that was helpful for you, leave a thumbs up on that video. I deeply appreciate the help there to make it more visible. And last but not least, on my channel, I do daily videos like these, so you might want to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to not miss any future content. Also, in the description box, you'll find my Twitch channel, where I do regular streams, my Discord server, where you can find a friendly community of like-minded gamers, and last but not least, also ways and means to support this project more directly and financially. Because my content will always stay free and I can get and I can use every pair of helping hands that wants to do that. But rest assured, you help a lot by just watching these videos. That's the biggest form of support, and I'm ever grateful. See you guys next time and have fun with that spaceship.